<laughs> I start the recording and you start talking about that. That's like, uh, ah. Now we're doing something a little bit different this week. We're doing an experiment uh, to see how people react to good audio but a lack thereof video or adequate audio. I'm not sure we can really get good audio here. We don't exactly have the best mics. <laughs> But it is the trio. We have Bit and Philippe. Yeah, is it Philip or Philippe? <laughs> you got it right the uh, first time. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Bit, do you want to start with your favorite one, the Union? Uh, we're gonna go into the Union. Do you want? I, I, we covered that in Mac versus PC. I, uh, I mean, I said everything I needed to say in that. In that, in that uh, okay. I just think. I just think that they're, they're they to to be jealous of or feel insecure about or just have your dreams, I guess, dashed by assuming you get a corporate position when you are, I would assume, probably don't have that skill set. And if you don't, then you need to. Uh, then there's two problems. One, if you have a skill set to work in corporate, why didn't you apply? Uh, and, and why did you go into retail? And two, if you don't have a skill set, learn it and then apply. A union, I, Steve Jobs is going to tell you to I would too. Okay, well, I, I guess you just want to get into what we didn't cover in PC, which is the, the Mac-ness and so forth. Okay. Oh, well, uh, uh, did you, uh, well, I mean, like, uh, well, actually, uh, I mean, wh where do you want to start? Uh, I I'm fine with whatever. We got, it's not like we don't have plenty of Apple stuff here. Let's see, Apple Store Secrets. Say, so we, we did, right? Yeah, that so was the... That take no negativity. Well, I think that's probably something that most uh, workplaces try to strive for. They, they, especially in retail, you cannot project laziness, complacency, Unattentiveness. I, you know, retail's all about the sale, mostly. And you can turn a shit product, and not, not to say that they're shit products, but you can turn a shit product into a sale just on sheer tact and how uh, the sales force carries itself. This is one of the reasons I don't work sales. I have done sales, and that's just, I. You, you begin to feel sleazy if you do sales long enough. <laughs> it's like, because it's, I mean, nine times out of ten it's commission based. I, I, I don't think the Apple salespeople are, are, actually, do we know, are they commission or do they get a salary? I think it's salary. Okay. Like, they don't act, they don't really act, at least every time I've gone to the Apple store, like there's a commission at all. Because the, the first two people that you see usually when you walk in are, um, uh, what do you call that? The concierge, right? And then um, you have usually Apple techs in the back. And I'm talking about those that train, like the, the group training, uh, personal one-on-one, -on -one, stuff like that. And then you have maybe somebody who's around the software and third-party section. Usually like, you know, you have cases and all sort of stuff. Then you have maybe a few on the floor in different zones that I know of, so I don't think it would, it, it doesn't look like they would, or they don't even behave or per, approach you like it is a commission. They'd have to pull on their train if they were me, because if anybody drags me back into an Apple store again, I'm going to just flat out go there. Where's the one with the removable battery? <laughs> That's going to be my answer. <laughs> uh... Okay. But you know what's sad, though? Uh, I've uh, uh, witnessed, you know, the pup kids coming in to an Apple store, and you see them on YouTube. Uh, now, I, I didn't witness it to a degree that they did on YouTube, but uh, a guy on purpose was making fun of uh, Apple when they walked in. And uh, through, like, it wasn't their iPod, you could tell, because it was like some old uh, iPod generation, and then, and, and, uh, I probably hadn't worked for years, and they were they threw it on the floor and stuff, laughed and, and ran out. I just thought that was so silly that 
I, people can get provoked to that level to, to prove what point, you know. It's the anti-Apple fanboyness, you know. It's like oh. I, I hate them, but I prefer to poke it where Apple's weak rather than just go, "It sucks." It does yeah. suck, but it has but valid it, weaknesses. <laughs> I will say that a lot of the geniuses aren't, you know. But that, see, I'm not. The, I, I admit I'm not a normal consumer, but I think a lot of the, what the geniuses do know are going to be helpful enough for. Most of the consumers that are going to go in there. They're going to. They're going to know. I, 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 I never have a problem with you know. Apple calls them geniuses and that's marketing, but really all they are is they're the same thing as the blue shirt guys at Best Buy. You know, they're they they are more well informed than a moron, but they're not this time. Where the only time I have a problem with that is when those people begin to become condescending to and that happens in apple stores just like it does everywhere like they 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 begin to buy the hype of their position and i've not witnessed that i mean i've gone quite a few times uh, they, they've always seemed very helpful and, and, and i can tell you though this one this one genius i think handled himself well because this was when I was going over HD stuff and for my media center for the Mac Mini. And, um, of course, what he was trained to go over was the Apple TV. And, and I made a quick I made a quick snap at it. You know, I said, you know, never put Apple and TV in the same sense in my presence when it's an iTunes Plus box. Yeah, but I, 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 I quickly made it humorous and, and eased and because I, I, I was trying to make it clear I wasn't there to be an oh, no, no, see, That's the thing. You were lucky. In every place, whether it's your bank, Best Buy, an Apple store, there's always that one or two people who have the common sense in their head to go, I know the manual tells me to do this, but if I follow the manual with this person, I'm just going to piss them the F off. And then there's the people who don't know how to get off the script. So it's like that circuit doesn't click with them, and they just sit there and piss you the fuck off. And, and you well, know. this guy was great. I mean, and, and, and we left off, but they got to more serious questions that he really had a tough time answering, and we'd, and we'd look it up. And uh, I think he, he learned more out of the experience than, than, than I did, but he, he, he handled himself well. And I think that he looked at the Mac Mini very, very differently because... It, the conversation started off where he believed that the Mac Mini was going to die. And I looked at him and I said, I hope not. You, I, I know of a whole following that is making the Mac Mini their media centers. And I think he was surprised to, to, to see that. And, and definitely years later, we still, we still see the Mac Mini revamped, continued, made into a server. So The only thing I don't understand about the Mac Mini... Uh, it's one of the Macs that kind of makes sense, but it, it's the thing about it that's still a song is why it it isn't m more easy to get apart and get at and you know like. Well, now it is. I mean, it's a lot easier. I think this newer model is easier. It, to get at the RAM, but the hard drive and the optical drive and the things like that. No, not so much. That's. Well, let's be clear though. I think a box four factor box that small. Even if you were to build it yourself, it's going to be tedious. I mean, that's it. You're going to be hard. It's, it's yeah, you're, so gonna, it's you're compressing parts in a small space. So, I, I mean, I've seen the small PC cases and stuff like that. It's still, it's not it's not that fun to work on them either. I, I, I've seen a PC one that looks, it's literally the exact same shape of the Mac Mini and what it is is you unscrew four screws on four recessed screws on the top and the whole plate comes out and everything's right there. Well look uh, for the old Mac the putty is not a big deal and, and essentially you don't even need to screw but you're doing putting a piece of plastic back off of the hook and then it's it just comes off. And no, then you I, I, have access I, to I, I know that but uh, what I don't understand is why uh, here is all you would have to do to the Mac Mini to, to make it do what I want. All you would have to do to it is make that because it's it's got that two tone case. The top and bottom is one, and then that ring that uh, aluminum ring around it is another. Is is is? No, oh, it all comes off. What yeah, basically, I'd like that to just slide off. 
and then there it is. Your, your optical drive's right there to slide out. Your hard drive's right there to slide out, and the RAM's on the bottom side. Those are the things the average user is going to want to screw with. And the more intimidated user will, the more sophisticated user will be okay with taking the extra that, screws and plate that, off to get at the CPU. About, that ring you're talking about in the top are all one piece that comes off. Yeah, so I know, but it, but you have to pop all those things. You're you're yeah. honestly telling me they couldn't make it where you could just like. Do a push a button on the bottom or something, and it just. Well, sometimes when you do that, let's be honest. I mean, I've seen it in Dells and HPs and all that. These push button things eventually wear out, and then. Okay, no they make they make it a torque screw, uh, uh, or, or. They could go with screws, but then the, the, I know what they're going to go after, which is the seamless effect. Which uh, okay, like. but put, 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 screws, put the it. torque screws in the bottom on the feet. Then they're hidden. It's still seamless. It, it's well. I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's a big deal to take a thing off, but pushing the hooks back. It's I mean, a. It, it, it's it, that and the glass screen to the iMac is a big deal to the average user to the point that they. Well, are, the iMac's different. The iMac's different now. Well, no, no. E e even the putty thing. knife. I have tried to show people how easy this is. They're scared to death to do it. They're afraid they're going to cut some wire or something. Mm. Well, no, the iMac is different. I think that they should have... No, to just on the Mac the Mini. Time. Just on the Mac Mini bit. They're, they're scared. Oh, they're scared they're going to damage something in there. Yeah, I understand. No. But then, I think that kind of user doesn't... doesn't that's why... We got to understand, custom builders and people who upgrade are not... No, the, 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 a bit. These people are not afraid to unscrew the side of their tower and stick RAM in. They're not afraid to do that. They're scared to death to stick a putty knife in their Mac Mini because they're afraid they're going to destroy something precious with the putty knife. I think the trouble is, is because it's such a small um, enclosure, I think the thing is you, you get the impression that it's a lot easier to damage something in there because there's not a lot of room to work with. Yeah, the, 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 re, the reality, and the other thing is, I know some who won't do it because they're afraid they'll scratch it up, they don't, and they don't want to make it look ugly. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and admittedly, if you slip once one too many times doing that putty knife thing, you will scratch that. <laughs> yeah, you can. I mean, you could, yeah, just, I, I would buy that. I, yeah, they probably <laughs> feel like they're going to damage it, definitely. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Uh, 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 most of them think they're going to damage the electronics, but some of them are worried about the cosmetic, and that's a valid concern. You know, even I, I, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, 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 anyways, that's <laughs> yes. I, I I just have the centipad thing. We are the oh, they're geniuses having the quickening. <laughs> I don't know. My experience is fine. I just don't typically buy a lot. One, because uh, usually I can find the Apple products cheaper online, and I don't have to pay tax. Yes, the Internet, the world's largest tax dodge until they get reciprocal tax agreements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, um... Philip, are they selling unlocked iPhones? And uh, no, wait, they've been selling unlocked yeah. iPhones in the UK for a few years now, haven't they? Uh, uh, I think O2, uh, which was the which was the exclusive one, uh, finished their thing at the end of 2009. So it's been just uh, just over a year, and six months. Yeah. Like and now the U.S. has joined you. Now that we only have one GSM carrier. I was going to say, is, uh, and because that's only one one of the two technologies that's practically got it, isn't it? If I'm right, because a, a, a T-Mobile is going to practically be gone in it in a couple of months. Yeah. I, I want to honestly know what would happen if you bought an unlocked iPhone, took it to T-Mobile, and bought an unlimited, 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 unlimited plan. Next year or the year after, when T-Mobile becomes AT&T, is AT&T going to say you're screwed, or do you get to keep your grandfathered unlimited, unlimited, unlimited? I mean, the thing is, what well, I can't understand, I mean, do they really think that... You know, p people go wherever they can get the best price for something. That's just the way the majority of people work. I mean, do they really expect people are going to sit where they are, and you know, unless they're in contract? But if they've got the free will to move, do they expect people are going to stay stay there just because it was T-Mobile, but now it's AT&T? Out of the goodness of their hearts, I wouldn't expect so. 
Well, the thing is, they, they can't take their phone to a CDMA provider. Uh, all right, you say, well, it's just, uh, you'd hope that there's uh, a, you know, a new one that they want to upgrade to by then, so then that way that they wouldn't have to worry about being stuck because nobody should have to be stuck with, you know, being stuck with a handful of uh, providers, which is, you know, where I think there's a problem with that situation, to be honest. Yeah, I, personally, I was hope I, I've been hoping that all of these carriers, including Apple, would come up with a, a, a Qualcomm, you know, a CDMA slash GSM phone, so you can do that. You can literally take the same device from carrier to carrier to carrier, but they don't seem to want to do that. Like, I mean, I'd pay an extra fifty to hundred bucks for the thing to have that ability. <gasps> mm, yeah. I am I the I wonder I I'm probably the minority though most people wouldn't pay for that. Well, I think as well the part of the reason why we're already there with with like the all all of our um well our all our five well, actually no all our four major carriers have got it now and the reason for that being and why I think that hasn't been an issue from our point of view is because we don't have more than one technology we just stay we're just under the um the GSM. Yeah, which I guess in some ways is good and bad. Just, but yeah, you can take anything from anywhere to anywhere. Yeah, but well, that's it. Even even the, like even the, the, some of the handful of small time carriers that we got over here, that's even easy to do. Like you know, so there's no there's no second technology to, for the phones to run on. So you should don't have any conflict problems. But I haven't looked this up yet. Do you know if on the unlocked iPhones they're selling here, if they have both? Antenna frequencies, or if they're only the AT and T band. I actually don't know. Cause that that really don't know. that that's been the real problem with like unlocked phones in the past. I, I've heard I've heard of Apple supposed to be making a dual band uh, iPhone. You know, one one for CDMA and uh, I, I mean a, a combined chip that yeah. combines both CDMA and GSM on. And obviously, they have a CDMA and a GSM iPhone, but I'm saying on one chip. I, I, okay, then all they got to do is con convince Verizon and Sprint to allow people to walk in and say, I want to activate this thing that I didn't buy from you. That's probably, it's not going to be unlocked in that sense. I, 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 uh, it's, I think Apple's just going to sell it, and then you could probably hit one CMA carrier, and that's going to be your carrier uh, for life. Um, uh, with, I guess, let me put a caveat to that: is that is probably doable. Uh, Sprint's probably going to do. Sprint and Verizon will probably try to make some some sort of exclusivity argument, and while they may not fully block it, to change from Sprint to maybe Verizon would be a a, a, a problem. You know? No, no, that, that's the thing. It, it's. If, if, if the reality is, if you bring an unlocked CDMA device to the CDMA carriers, you can't activate it because it's not in their database and they won't add it. See, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that there's probably te they technically. Can't, see, I don't know where the, the technical is going to meet the political in this argument, that, and that's that's what we've got to decide. I know CDMA can technically handle it and they can offer it, and I think that. And maybe Apple's been proven to make pretty good deals with some strong entities out there and, and markets and, and 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 get their way sometimes. So hopefully they're able to to pull something off or Sprint and Verizon or maybe Verizon is going to buy Sprint and then then everything we're talking about is moot. Oh, the, then that'll be the death of any reasonable bandwidth in the United States because that is like literally Sprint is the last bastion at this point. And they are, aren't they? With Verizon capping all their new customers now. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's like AT&T says caps are good and they're bought, they bought T-Mobile, their primary competition. Verizon buys Sprint. That's it. We're all fucked. <laughs> it's just... Like, it, it'll be Hello Metro, uh, which is it, which is not really a solution. If because if you do any traveling, Metro is not a solution. Mm. Uh, it's just ah. Oh. Yeah, we have we have a lot of those local uh, core 
cell kits, you know, cell carriers that are uh, very inexpensive and unlimited, but you know, stuck to our area here. Yeah, like if the moment you get twenty minutes out of town, you're now you're, now you're screwed. You're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like you have a mobile phone that is in no way mobile. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <laughs> which you know, admittedly, is fine for a lot of people. You know, I it need, is. It works. It works for a lot of people. A lot of people don't, you know, don't travel outside their their city uh, very much and really have no reason to to, I guess, worry about roaming and all that the good stuff. I guess that's just ah. Okay. When my uh, in-laws came over and lived with us for a while, we, we got a couple of cricket phones that were uh, very inexpensive, and they were able to make all, you know, we could call them, and, and, they, and they were never going to leave the city, so, <laughs> they were our guests, so, uh, the time that they stayed with us, it was pretty easy, just nice. to use a, one of these local phones, very inexpensive. You know, more and more, I'm leaning towards the idea, if you're not doing a lot of traveling, what actually makes the most sense to do right now is to go into a Metro PCS and buy their Android phone and just set it up as a hotspot. Yeah. To, to your other device you got somewhere else. How much are their data plans? Is, uh... it, it's... How much, I wonder, how much are those? It's... 50 it's bucks. Good, uh, it's a pretty good, uh, it, it, unlimited, truly unlimited? It, it's unlimited, unlimited, unlimited. There's no fine print on this. Nope. Basically, as long as you're in the metro area, that's the only fine print. Once you're off the metro network, you're, you're on by the everything. But as long as you're on the network, it's unlimited, unlimited, unlimited. They even pay the taxes. They adjust the price they're charging you for the plan so that the taxes make it be that $50. That might just be it then. Yeah, if I, I mean, given what everybody else is doing with data, that makes sense. Because then that's your four to eight device hotspot, and it's a phone. And then you all your other devices your, your laptop, your tablet, your other phone, your everything just ties into that internet connection. Now I'm checking over Houston. It doesn't look like it. I can't tell. They have like hashes through this map. Diagonal. It means there's that, holes. See, because they say metro. Okay, but that's darker there. But, in the, but that's over the water. Why would they? There, there's the two. There, there's three zones. There's off network. There's advanced services, and then there's phone only. Oh shoot! Okay, I see. Get, I get it now. I get it now. Um, Metro PCS extended home area are the hash are these hash marks. So there is no. But if you zoom out. The hash marks go away. I don't, I don't know if this is a video. Oh, no. It, it, the, I get. the more detailed Houston, you are. Oh, I got No, okay. Houston Houston is not even in the metro PCS area. Home no, area. like... Now, the, Dallas is though. No, that's the thing. Like they're uh, they're in like your major major metropolitan areas, but you're not quite major. Like you're you're slightly less than that. That's the thing. They're here. They're there. They're sun. They cover nothing in between. But if you're in a town that has them, uh, and but this, but we're much larger than Dallas. So well, but the Dallas gets the whole Dallas Fort Worth Plano tri mega what the fuck plex. <laughs> Which is probably why they're in Dallas and Austin and not Houston. I although yeah, that's. Huh. Although I thought um, that, I thought no, that web, email, and multimedia available in some areas. To access this coverage, included in all rate plans, C rate plans. I'm, I'm curious. I thought Metro was in Houston though. That doesn't look. But not according to their map, unless unless like I said that yeah. See, Metro PCS coverage is not available in your area. Okay. What's a competitor to them that would have data? Does Cricket now use do data? I don't know. 
Um, boost is another boost, one. That's, but they're sprint reliant, right? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, broadband access. Cricket was really easy to. Uh, I mean, talk about hassle free, really. It really was. No, I, I know. Well, and, and you know, honestly, if Walmart was smart, they'd, they'd turn those Wally World phones into unlimited pipes and they'd sell the bejesus out of them. So you can make a, you've got, you've got a mobile data, a do more on the move. Um, let's see what their plans offer. I don't know the actual terms. These are just speeds. Oh, okay. Usage level 2.5 gigabytes at best speed. Yeah. Usage level 5 gigabytes at best speed. Uh, and then 7.5 gigabytes at best speed. Um, these are mostly speeds. It's not... Okay, important. If you exceed 2.5 gigabytes, of usage in 30 day period you are subject to Cricket's fair use policy. Yeah. Your maximum speed may be reduced until usage is under 2.5. But you are never cut off. Or yeah, charged. They, Whoa! Yeah. They'll throttle you if you're a heavy user. But they won't They won't charge you for an overage. No. They just throttle you. Whoa! I don't know what's... That's... Um, Oh, no, no, see, I, the, the, that's the I thing. That. It, it doesn't make sense with what AT&T or Verizon doing to buy any data from them. Basically, it's like, yeah, I want that device, but I don't want none of your fucking data. <laughs> Dang, no, no, turn on your... We need to, we need to, I'm going to have to do some videos on this to get the word out. I think the, the only way we can get the big companies to buy into this is if we can get them to buy plans from uh, these local guys. And they're, uh, they're so cheap that, it, honestly, it makes... Like, if you wanted to buy a Zoom right now, I would go to Sam's and buy the Wi-Fi only one, and then I'd go to Metro or Boost, depending where you are, and get a, a phone that has tethering from them, and use that as my mobile internet. Yeah, that's, you know, that's a great... I never... See, I never thought that the lo these local guys start doing data. I really didn't no, it's like the only hitch is they're local. You know, you can't go know. drive cross country. You, I never, th I thought it was only text messaging and voice. You know, no, no. people who wanted a smartphone. And and, and, I, and they're starting to do four G now too. And now their their four G is a lot smaller and more Spartan, but they're starting to do four G now too. Even Android phones. I never knew this stuff. I just shame on me for not paying attention. Yeah, no, and no, that's the thing. They've got these little, like, cheapy $50 Android phones with tethering. I mean, it, it makes sense. Go buy that. <laughs> they have two choices, IDEN or CDEN. Uh-huh. That's interesting. 